Withings just launched what is probably Brian Johnson's wet dream, the Use Can Nutrio. And I feel like Withings have a great concept, but the execution leaves something to be desired. And in this video, I'll argue that it's probably only Brian Johnson that should get this device. Now, when first announced, I was super excited about this device that automatically tracks many biomarkers by measuring your urine. And that's actually why I'm recording this video in my bathroom right now. With things calls it a nutrition revolution. I guess they cannot easily make health claims, so they focus on nutrition instead. And no, you're not gonna eat your toilet cakes. It's supposed to measure your urine to, in their words, one, capture key nutritional insights, two, get a clear picture of your body's response to nutrition, and three, build your personalized nutrition strategy. Now, this device actually goes on the front of your toilet and a few times per week with the app, you have to open it up, you pee on it, it closes and then it analyzes your urine. And it measures, I would say, only four things. First of all, ketone levels, second, vitamin C levels, bioacidity, and finally, hydrostatus. Now, this all sounds very fancy and also quite technologically advanced. And Withing sells it as a way to stay healthy with cutting edge technology. And I do agree that the concept of automatically measuring your urine and getting different biomarkers from it over time to see if anything changes. And if there's a big change, this could be a bad or good indication, but for that, you need some interpretation. So it could be interesting to track certain things over time. And urine is indeed the bio sample that's most easily accessible and non-invasive. However, the way that Withings implemented it is super limited in my opinion. And I'm not sure if anyone besides Brian Johnson should actually get this device. Now, let me explain why. In this video, I'll discuss how useful these measurements actually are. So there's only four and I'll close off with what I think is actually a much better alternative if you want to measure things in your urine. However, I want to start with the thing that will probably be the turn off for most of us, the price. The cheapest option is $380 initially when you buy the device and then an additional $99.95 for each three month renewal and shipment, which will give you two measurements per week but it can get quite a bit more expensive. If you want daily measurements, it will set you back $450 initially and then another $180 per month. Now, this is just crazy expensive to me and it might be indeed that manufacturing is actually quite expensive, but that leads us to the second and most important part of this video. Is the Withings use scan actually useful? Well, honestly, mostly not really. Okay, I've done the whole setup. Basically, I've had to install a cartridge into the device itself. And now it's time to put it into the toilet. It really doesn't say if I'm still allowed to keep one of these cleansers in there as well. So maybe I'll complain about that later, but it seems you need to install it in the front of your toilet, as you can see right here. I'll do that and maybe do a first test. I might need to drink a bit of water before, but let's see. All right, it should now be connected. So I actually selected the intensive program right here. Okay, to me, the days don't matter that much, but this seems to be a nice distribution. So I measure on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, five times a week. Now I'm lucky here that I'm the only one basically consistently using this toilet. Let's go through the four things that it actually measures. And let's start with what is, in my opinion, one of the most useless ones, vitamin C. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, Withings says on their website, and I quote, vitamin C levels in your urine reflect your intake of this essential nutrient, which supports antioxidant protection, collagen production, immune health, and iron absorption. The presence of vitamin C in your urine typically indicates that your body has met its necessary daily requirement with the excess being secreted. Now that sounds very important, but honestly, most of us have high enough vitamin C levels. Looking at the statistics, a study from the CDC found that about 7% of the US population is vitamin C deficient, which is more than I expected. However, if we're being honest, is the group of people that is watching this video that's looking after their health and potentially willing to spend hundreds of dollars on a device like this actually vitamin C deficient? That's very unlikely. 
And if you're really worried about your vitamin C levels, just take a supplement. You anyway pee out the excess as Withing says, and it's super cheap. No need to measure it in my opinion. The same study from the CDC also found that only 0.5%, so one in 200 of the people taking vitamin C supplements were actually vitamin C deficient. So in my opinion, measuring your vitamin C levels in your urine is no reason to buy this device because you just take a supplement every day and you're good to go, which is super cheap and probably you're good to go anyway. But what about measuring the pH of your urine? That's the second metric, Withings calls it bioacidity. Now for this, they did cite a quite interesting paper, a quite massive study out of Norfolk in the UK with over 22,000 people showed a clear pattern. People who ate more fruits and veggies tended to have more alkaline urine, so less acidic urine. While people who ate more meat and protein rich foods had more acidic urine. Now that's not surprising from what I read, the minerals in plants act as natural alkalizers and the sulfur in meat and dairy makes your kidneys put out more acid. This does mean that your urine pH is kind of like a mirror of your diet but the problem in my opinion is that it's kind of a messy mirror. The number jumps around quite a bit depending on what you ate for lunch, how hydrated you are and even your workout status. So measuring it several times a week to me feels a bit like checking your weight three times a day. You'll see some changes, sure, but most of them are just noise or not interesting for your dietary changes. I would say that the big takeaway is, if you eat more plants, you'll see your urine pH drift upwards, so be less acidic, and if you eat more meat, it goes downwards. But obsessively tracking every fluctuation probably won't give you any extra insight. Maybe measuring it for a while will give you the insight that you have to eat more plants and that could potentially motivate you to change your diet. So it's interesting, but again, to me, not worth the price. Now, the next thing this device measures is ketones. And this one is actually pretty interesting. But before talking about ketones, if you want to support this channel, there are several ways of doing that. First of all, you can become a channel member, which gives you early access to many of my videos and is like Patreon on YouTube and the most direct way of supporting the channel. Or if you want to track your glucose levels for a while with a continuous glucose monitor, I'd recommend pairing it to the Levels app. This is also not cheap. I would only do it every once in a while to figure out a few things, but Levels is really the best way of integrating your diet with a CGM. Or if you're into running and want the best running plans and life guidance during your runs, I recommend the Runner app for which you can get a free trial up here or down here. Or if you want to buy anything at all on Amazon for that matter, if you first click my affiliate link, it doesn't cost you any extra and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. You could even bookmark it if you want. But back to ketones. These are chemicals your liver makes when you don't have much carbohydrates around. So instead of burning sugar, your body flips the switch and starts running on fat. That's why people on keto diets, intermittent fasting or endurance training often see ketones in their urine. Now this can actually be useful for tracking your diet. If you're actually trying to get into ketosis, those positive ketone readings are basically your yes, I made it signal. Athletes sometimes check them to confirm they're in fat burning mode for training. And in medicine, ketone monitoring is really important for people with diabetes because very high ketone can signal something dangerous called ketoacidosis. But as always, there are some caveats here. First of all, urine ketones don't always match your blood ketones in real time. And once your body adapts to fat metabolism, you may actually show fewer ketones in urine, even though you're still in ketosis. So in my interpretation, it's a good beginner's feedback tool potentially, but it's not precision lab data. Not that we're expecting that from this device, but bottom line, if you're experimenting with keto fasting or long training, this could be useful. But if you're eating a normal balanced diet, frequent ketone checks aren't gonna tell you much you can act on. But interestingly, the ideal range for with things is actually you not being into ketosis as you can see right here so they're basically trying to give you a normal balanced diet which means you shouldn't go into ketosis because you shouldn't be burning a lot of fat however if you're just eating normally and healthily i think it's not that useful in general so this measurement might be useful for some people if you're worried you're not having a balanced diet you can measure it for a week or so and find out 
or if you're actually trying to get into ketosis, then it might be useful. But as I'll show in a second, there are much cheaper alternatives. But first, let's talk about the last measurement, hydrostatus, which is basically just hydration. It does that by checking the specific gravity of your urine, or in other words, how dense is it compared to water. If your urine is really concentrated, it usually means you're running low on fluids, or if it's closer to water, you're well hydrated. Now for athletes, that can actually matter a lot. Even being slightly dehydrated can hurt performance and slow down recovery. So having a quick daily checking could help fine tune how much you're drinking. For the rest of us though, we probably don't need these fancy sensors, urine color, your thirst levels, or even hopping on a skill before and after a long workout can give you a pretty good idea of your hydration status. And here's the thing. Hydration, urine pH and ketones can actually be measured at home with simple and cheap urine reagent test strips. Now I have them right here. They are these little dipsticks right here that you pee on and then you just match the color that they turn to to this chart on the bottle. Now they're actually really cheap, usually just a few cents per strip and you can find them in most pharmacies or online. And it's not just hydration, pH and ketones that they measure. Depending on the type of strip, they can also measure things like glucose, protein, nitrites, and even signs of a urinary tract infection. Now, of course, always consult your doctor if you think you have a urinary tract infection, but that means that for basic feedback, a $5 or so box of strips can give you most of the same information you get from this new flashy device from Withings that will at least cost you multiple tens of dollars per Per month and if you go for the cheapest version you only get two measurements per week now of course the strips are manual you dip them you wait and you compare the colors a smart device like the withings use can nutrio automates that process it logs the results and builds a trend over time so that's an advantage so in the end it really comes down to whether you're more about cheap and simple or whether you value the automated tracking and data visualization enough to invest in a gadget like this but i would think potentially an even cheaper option could be if somebody builds a device where you can take this urine strip you put it in there it takes a picture and automatically scans and scores each of those squares i would think you can implement that quite cheaply i even even tried to build something like that myself many years ago with just a simple setup, a foam picture and then some vision learning. For the Withings device, honestly, I think that only Brian Johnson probably has enough money and interest to warrant getting it. For myself, if I'm being honest, it's just way too expensive for what it actually does. If either it would measure way more or would be way less expensive, it might be interesting. But at this price point, no, it's not interesting to me. It's just not worth it. It almost feels like Withings had a great concept of measuring urine. They might've even announced it, which is really cool. And they just really wanted to make it happen. However, I suspected it might've turned out that it was way too difficult to measure a lot of these things reliably. So in the end, we only have four measurements in a device like this. Now, of course, this is speculation, but for me, it would need to do way more to be interesting. And I'm not sure how it works internally, but I wouldn't be surprised if the basic technology is the same as in those cheap strips that I just showed you. But what do you think? Would you consider getting this device and why? I was honestly quite disappointed with the product and I cancelled my subscription for now. Again, the best way to support the channel is by becoming a YouTube member or by bookmarking my Amazon affiliate link and using it before any Amazon purchase or really by using any affiliate link down below. Now, I think you will like this video right here on how I'm trying to optimize my life at the moment or this video on the 8 sleep pod.